Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. In today's session, we will be looking at genetic algorithm. So, genetic algorithm is the most popular uh, among the heuristic techniques which we have discussed. This session, we will broadly divide it into two parts. In the first part, we will look into something called as uh, binary coded genetic algorithm and in the second part, we will look into the real coded genetic algorithm. Again in binary coded genetic algorithm, we will first look at the working principle and then as usual we will take an example and try to understand binary coded genetic algorithm. We will follow it with brief uh, discussion on the drawbacks of binary coded genetic algorithm and then we will move on to the real coded genetic algorithm. These are three classical books on genetic algorithm. The first one is by John H. Holland, the other one is by David E. Goldberg. And the third one is actually a multi-objective optimization uh, textbook, right? but one, uh, one or two chapters are dedicated for uh, single objective genetic algorithm. So, what we are going to discuss uh, is a small part from uh, this book. right? So, for additional reading, you can look into uh, this book by Professor Kalyan Maidev. So, this shows the popularity of uh, genetic algorithm uh, over the past two decades. So, as we see there has been an ex exponential uh, increase in the number of publications which uh, use genetic algorithm. Again uh, like all our previous meta heuristic techniques, genetic algorithm is used in diverse area right from engineering to social sciences, business management and so on and so, so forth. This shows the comparison of the meta heuristic techniques which we are learning in as part of this course. So, as we see genetic algorithm has a clear edge over uh, other techniques. right? So, genetic algorithm if we see uh, throughout uh, the years, uh, it has been widely used right? followed by particle swarm optimization, the, this, this peak is of particle swarm optimization and for the other techniques they were recently proposed in the more in the last decade unlike genetic algorithm which has uh, been there for quite some time. So, this is the status of those five meta heuristic techniques that we are discussing as part of this course. So, genetic algorithm is inspired by the principles of natural genetics and selections. So, it is based on Darwin's principle of natural evolution. So, in this genetic algorithm solution vectors are termed as chromosome. Right? There are two types of cro chromosome, one is parent chromosome and the, the other one is the offspring chromosome. So, parent chromosomes are the solutions from which new solutions would be generated whereas offspring chromosomes are the newly generated solutions. Right? So, similar to the other techniques this is also a population based technique. Right? From the population we will extract few good members uh, and we will term them as parent. So, we will be using these parents to produce the offsprings. So, these offsprings are uh, generated through uh, reproduction and uh, variation. Reproduction involves selection of good solutions for mating, whereas variation involves crossover and mutation. Right? So, once uh, offsprings are generated, uh, we select good solutions after the variation operator. So, initially we will have a population, we will generate uh, offsprings, we will combine them and we will take the best members in the population. Right? So, a uh, genetic algorithm is designed such a way that a better candidate has more chance to survive in an environment of limited resources. So, that is more like good solutions will be retained and bad solutions will be discarded. So, we will look into how binary coded GA can be used for real variables. Since we are going to talk about only binary coded GA in the first half of the session, uh, we will look into like how real variables can be handled. Right? So, real variables are to be encoded into binary variables 0 and 1. Right? So, for each real variable we will have to fix the bit length. So, if we specified the bit length n, then we can have two n different solutions. So, for example, if I say bit length is 3, so that means our string length is 3. So, with this 3 digits, we can uh, generate all the other combinations 0, 0, 0, 
0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 and so on right. So, like this there will be 2 power n different solutions. So, this is an example right. So, if we take a binary string of length n uh, say phi and if we use to vary represent a real variable x within the bounds x min and x max right. So, our string will be 0 0 0 0 0 there are phi elements in this because our bit length is phi. So, all possible combinations uh, of this phi string is uh, 2 power phi. Right. So, the last number would be 1 1 1 1 1. So, this 0 0 0 0 0 will correspond to x min whereas, this 1 1 1 1 1 will correspond to x max. So, any value between this let us say uh, this value 1 0 0 0 1 0. So, if this is the binary number we can decode it right. So, here what we will call is decoded value. So, decoded value is nothing but the decimal equivalent of this. So, if, if we are given this binary number the way we determine the decimal equivalent of this binary is something that you would have come across right. So, uh, 0 into 2 power 0, 1 into 2 power 1 again 0 is the element. So, 0 into 2 power 2, uh, 0 into 2 power 3 for this 0 and 1 into 2 power uh, 4. So, this has to be 1. So, 1 into 2 power 4 will be 16. So, this value turns out to be 18 right. Uh, so, this is how we will be decoding a binary number into its decimal value or for today's session we will call this decimal value is as nothing but decoded value right. So, this gives the generic expression how to obtain a decoded value from a binary string. So, if the first uh, element from this side is b1, the second element is b2 and so on then this uh, expression gives the decoded value right. So, we will start with 2 power 0 which is 1, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3 and all the way up to 2 power n minus 1 right. So, maximum decoded value of binary string in this case is 31. So, if you decode this value 1 1 1 1 1 you will get 31 right and the minimum value is uh, 0. So, if you decode this value we will get 0 and if we decode this value we will get 31 right. The maximum decoded and the minimum decoded value is 31 and 0 if the bit length is 5. So, if the bit length is varied then obviously, the number of possible combinations would be 2 power n and the decoded value would uh, be different right. So, let us see an uh, example if our bounds are let us say 5 and 30 right. So, the we want to represent let us say now we have a real variable x and we want to use uh, binary coded GA. So, in this case first we will have to encode this real variable into a binary uh, equivalent. So, first we will have to decide as to how many bits are we going to represent this real variable with. So, in this case we have taken the bit size to be 4 right. So, if we have 4 then we have 2 power 4 combinations like 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 and so on if we proceed we will get 16 different solutions right. So, now these 16 different solutions are supposed to represent the numbers between 5 and 30 right. So, between 5 and 30 for a real variable there are infinite uh, values, but here we have this 16 values only. So, this 16 values are supposed to capture this space right. So, obviously, we will not be able to capture every number right. So, that is why we have something called as precision in this one right. So, precision is given by x max minus x min divided by 2 power n minus 1. Uh, if our bit length is 4, 2 power 4 would be 16, 16 minus 1 15 right. So, uh, x max will be 30, x min will be 5. So, 30 minus 5. So, this is x max minus x min divided by 16 minus 1. So, which is nothing but 25 by 15. So, the precision is 1.67. So, we will start with 5. The next number that we can actually capture is 5 plus 1.67 and the next number that we will capture is 5 plus 2 into 1.67 and so on right. So, we will not be able to capture any number which is greater than 5, but less than 6.67 right. So, that is a drawback of binary coded GA. So, now let us see given a binary string how do we construct the actual value. Let us assume that the binary string is 0 1 1 0. Right. So, if we determine the decoded value of this right. So, that would be 0 into 2 power 3. So, this is 0 into 2 power 3, 1 into 2 power 2 right, 1 into 2 power 1 and 0 into 2 power 6 0. 
right. So, if we uh, calculate this, this comes out to be 6. So, the decoded value is 6, right. So, we have seen that 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros would correspond to 5 and uh, 4 values of 1, right, that is the maximum uh, permissible 4 digit uh, string, right. So, this is 30. Right. So, this is rep supposed to represent 5, this is supposed to represent 30. So, this string actually when decoded it comes out to 6, but the value that it represents can be determined from this formula. Right. So, this formula says that the actual value of x is the minimum value of x, so in this case 5 plus x max minus x min, so in this case it is 30 minus 5 divided by 2 power n minus 1, so in this case it is 2 power 4 which is 16, 16 minus 1 into the decoded value. So, the decoded value here is 6, right. So, if we do this calculation, we will end up with 15. The decimal equivalent of 0, 1, 1, 0 is 6, right, that is the decoded value, but the corresponding real variable value for x min as 5 and x max as 30 is 15, right. So, let us see one more example, right. So, the in this case x min is 5, x max is 30, right. If n is equal to 3, the total number of combinations which we have is 8, right, 2 power 3 will be 8, so there are 8 possible solutions. So, those are given over here 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1, right. So, the decoded value of all this if we decode it, it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, the actual value is using this formula x min plus x max minus x min divided by 2 power n minus 1 into decoded value which is given over here. So, this number will actually correspond to 5, 3 zeros would correspond to 5, 3 ones would correspond to 30, 0 1 0 the decoded value is 2, right, decoded value we need to plug it back into this expression to get the actual value of 12.14, right. So, the precision in this case if we calculate. Uh, it is upper bound minus lower bound, so 30 minus 5 divided by 2 power 3 minus 1, so that would be 7. So, we can capture the uh, real variable 5, we can capture the real variable 8.57, we can capture the real variable 12.14 and so on, right. So, now if we see uh, the precision is very less, right, so we cannot capture some anything between 5 and 8.57 because the binary GA which we will initially study is going to work only with the binary strings. If you want a higher precision, then we will have to increase the bit length. Suppose let us say instead of 3 over here, if we decide to have a bit length of 4. So, in this case same problem x minus 5, x max is 30. So, in this case we will have 2 power n, so 2 power 4 combinations which is 16 possible solutions. So, the 16 possible solutions are listed here 1, 2, 3 and all those if you see these are the 16 possible combinations, right. Once we have this 16 possible combinations, we can obtain their decoded value, decoded value or the decimal equivalent, right. So, this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and so on up to 15, right. So, in this case the precision if you calculate using that formula, right, x max minus x min divided by 2 power n minus 1, the precision is 1.67. If you take this expression and plug the value of 0, right, you will see that you the actual value that you get is 5. If you substitute the value of 1 for decoded value and x max and x min minus 30 and 5, we will get 6.67. If we substitute 6 as the decoded value, x max is 30, x minus 5, right and uh, 2 power 4 minus 1 if we compute that we will get 15. So, here if we can see that uh, we are getting an increased precision when compared to here. So, here we will be able to capture the real variable value 5, we will be able to capture the real variable value 6.67, 8.33, 10 and so on, right. So, again this number if you want it is nothing but 5 plus 0 into 1.67 this 6.67 is nothing but 5 plus 1 into 1.67. So, if you want a higher precision, we will have to use a higher bit length, right. So, if our problem has two real variables, right and if we choose to represent each of the variable with a string of uh, bit length 4, right, then 4 plus 4, our total string length will be 8, 
right. So, as you can see as your number of variable increases and as we desire more and more precision the length of the population member would be very high right. So, that is a drawback of uh, binary coded GA, but for the sake of completion and to aid in our understanding we will still look at binary coded GA first and then we will move on to real coded GA. So, this is the basic flow chart of uh, genetic algorithm right. So, we will start with an initial population. So, for all other techniques let us say uh, we had two variable x 1 and x 2 right. Let us say x 1 was between 3 and 8 and x 2 was between 12 and 17 right. So, our initial population whatever we generated we had two columns column 1 representing variable x 1 and column 2 representing variable x 2. So, values of x 1 would be between 3 and 8 and values of x 2 would be 12 and 17. Whereas, in the case of genetic algorithm let us say we choose to represent each variable by a bit length of 4 right. In this case we will have our population would consist of only 1s and zeros. Despite the fact that our decision variables are between 3 and 8 and 12 and 17. Right. So, the population would be binary it will consist of only 0 and 1 right. So, how do we move from real variables to binary variables and back from binary variables to real variable is something that we have previously seen. So, the population is going to be completely a binary population. For this population we will have something called as tournament selection. So, tournament selection is nothing but a competition between various solutions and the solution which wins right. Uh, will constitute what is called as this mating pool right. So, we will have an initial population we want to select good solutions from initial population. So, what we will do is we will conduct tournament that is why we have the name uh, tournament selection right and from there we will select uh, the good solutions which will constitute the mating pool. Solutions which are there in mating pool are also known as parents. Once we determine this mating pool we will employ a operator called as crossover to generate the offsprings right. So, we have initial population we will have some tournament we will get a mating pool, mating pool is nothing but the parents then those parents will uh, undergo crossover to generate offspring and this offsprings again would undergo a process called as mutation right uh, to get modified offsprings over here right. So, even this is also known as offspring this is also known as offspring right. So, once we have this offsprings we have the initial population and we have the newly generated offerings. So, we will combine them and we will use this survivor operator right. So, right now we are not going into the details of each operator that we will see subsequently. Right now we are only looking at the basic flow chart right how genetic algorithm works right. So, using the survivor we will select the best members. Let us say we start with this uh, NP members in the population initially our population size is NP right. Uh, we generate few offsprings let us say here also we have NP and the same NP have been modified over here right. So, basically we have two NP solutions NP solutions over here and NP solutions over here. So, out of these two NP solutions we will select the best NP solutions. So, that will constitute the population for the subsequent generation. So, this is what we will be doing. Okay. So, one thing you need to understand is there are various ways to determine this mating pool. We will be looking at only what is called as tournament selection right there are other ways too. Similarly, in all, uh, for this crossover there are various types of crossover we will be looking at only one type of crossover right that is single point crossover. Similarly, in mutation there are various mutation strategies we will be again looking at one particular uh, mutation strategy. From this itself you can understand that there are various variants of genetic algorithm right. So, someone says that they are using genetic algorithm that is actually not the complete information right. So, genetic algorithm with which selection strategy, which crossover strategy, which mutation strategy uh, all those things need to be defined only then we would be able to understand what is the exact version of genetic algorithm someone has implemented. So, the first step is uh, to generate a population. Let us assume we are working with a problem which has two decision variables. So, d is equal to 2 and our population size is 6 right. So, this is a user defined parameter right. So, uh, whoever is whoever is solving that problem will have to take this call as to how many bits they are going to use to represent each variable. So, in this case let us say we are we choose to use 5 bits for both the variables. So, x 1 will be represented by 5 bits x 2 will be represented by 
5 bits these are actually real variables right but since binary coded ga works with only 0 and 1 we need to fix the number of bits we will be using for each variable so let us say in this case we choose 5 5 right so our size of the population matrix which was previously np cross d for all other techniques which we discussed so far the population size would be np cross d for here it will be np cross nd you because for each variable uh, we are using a bit length of 5 and there are two variables in this case so 5 into 2 and there are 6 members so the size of the population matrix will be a 6 cross 10 matrix uh, so out of this 10 columns 5 columns will indicate the what is the value of x1 and 5 columns will be used to determine the value of x2 right so initial population is generated randomly with 0 or 1 right so this is how the initial population can uh, possibly look right so all the elements if we see are between 0 and 1 so this has 5 columns column 1 2 3 4 5 and this also has column 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we have uh, our n is 5 right 5 columns we have two variables so this is 10 uh, number of chromosomes or the solutions are 6 so the size would be 6 cross 10 right suppose we choose to use unequal bit length right so for x1 let us say we uh, choose a bit length of 7 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and for x2 let us say we take a bit length of 5 and the number of solutions is still 6 right so in this case the dimension of the problem will be 12 columns 7 columns for the first variable and 5 columns for the second variable right so there will be 12 columns and uh, there will be 6 rows despite the fact that we have only 2 variable problem we will have to work with 12 columns because we have converted a real problem into a binary problem for this population member let us say we want to determine the fitness function value right so what we will do is we will first find out the decoded value decoded value is nothing but the decimal equivalent of this right so the decimal equivalent of this one right that is the uh, decoded value of x1 depending upon the bounds of x1 x min and x max of the first variable we will calculate what is the actual value of the variable x1 similarly we will use these 5 elements right to find out the decoded value of the second variable once we have the decoded value we will use that expression x min plus x max minus x min divided by 2 power n minus 1 into decoded value to determine the actual value of x2 once we have the actual values of x1 and x2 we will plug it back into the fitness function and determine what is the fitness of this solution 1 so now let us look into the reproduction operator uh, so the use of this reproduction operator is to identify good solutions right let us say we have np solutions and we still want np solutions right but the good solutions in this original population need to have multiple copies over here and the bad solutions should get a poor representation so this is going to be our mating pool right so this mating pool is what is actually going to be used in the crossover operation the next operation so to perform crossover we do not want the entire population but we are interested only in good solutions right so we will employ this reproduction operator to identify good solutions which will constitute the mating pool and the mating pool will undergo crossover so a property of this reproduction or selection operator is that it reduces the diversity of the population so we give more importance to the good solution the solutions which are not good uh, do not find a representation in the mating pool so that way it re reduces the diversity of the population one of the very popular reproduction operator is the tournament selection operator so in tournament selection operator we need to define something called as pool size right so pool size will tell us how many members uh, do we desire in the mating pool let us say if we have a np population initially uh, let us say uh, we desire np members in mating pool also not all the members should come into the mating pool but the good solutions should have multiple copies and the bad solutions uh, should have a poor representation right so we need to fix the pool size so usually the pool size is np right and then we need to fix a tournament size right so usually the tournament size is 2 right so what we will do is in tournament selection depending upon this number k let us say we take 2 as uh, tournament size so we will pick 2 members we will see which is better whichever is solution is better a copy of that would go into the mating pool 
whichever solution is not better that will not be put into the mating pool. Again there will be a competition between two other solutions, whoever is the winner will find a uh, place in the mating pool and the loser will not find its copy in the mating pool. So, this is called as a binary tournament because two members are playing. So, in binary tournament since two members are playing we will get one solution at a time right and so if we desire NP solutions right then we require NP tournaments. Let us say we have initial population size is 100, we decided that our mating pool should also have 100 solutions right. So, from each tournament we will get one. So, we need to conduct 100 such tournaments so that we get the required number of solutions in the mating pool. This can be any number right, the competition can be between any, any numbers. So, if k is 3 and let us say we have 6 solutions right, so and let us say we randomly pick up these 3 solutions 4, 2 and 6. So, what do we mean by conducting a competition between 4, 2, 6 is the solution which has the best fitness will be the winner. So, if our problem is maximization right and the fitness is 27, 89 and 12 then obviously 89 is the winner right. So, solution 2 wins and a copy of solution 2 will be placed in the mating pool. If the problem was to be a minimization problem then out of 27, 89, 12, 12 is the minimum value. So, in this case we say that solution 6 is the winner and a copy of the winner would be placed in the mating pool. So, this is how we will prepare the mating pool. So, a property of binary tournament selection is that if the tournaments are played systematically, systematically meaning each solution getting two chances to play. If you think about it, the best solution in the population gets two chances to play. So, if the, if the best solution is getting two chances to play, it is going to win both the times because it is the best solution, right. No matter with whom it is competing, it is going to win and it is playing twice. So, the mating pool will definitely have two copies of it. Now, think about the worst solution. So, despite the fact that we will be playing two competitions uh, with the worst solution also, in both the cases it will lose. So, obviously, the mating pool will not have any copies of the worst solution. All other solutions will have either 0 copies, 1 copy or 2 copy depending with whom they are playing. But the best solution will definitely find 2 copies and the worst solution will find 0 copies that much is assured. Rest of the solutions depending upon with whom they are competing, uh, they can have either 0 copies assuming that they fail both the times, both the times they are playing with someone better than them or they can play one tournament with someone uh, who is better than them and one tournament with uh, someone who is not better than them. In that case, they will win one tournament and it can happen that in both the tournaments, the solution uh, though it is not the best solution is competing with solutions which are poorer than itself. So, in that case it will win in both the cases. So, the other solutions will have 0, 1 or 2 copies depending upon whom they are play playing. Best solution will definitely have 2 copies and the worst solution will never be selected right. So, if we increase the tournament size right. So, if the tournament size is 2 like if 2 pl players are to play in a tournament uh, then the worst solution will not be in the mating pool. If 3 solutions are used to play right, then you if you analyze it worst and second worst solution will never be in the mating pool because they both will keep losing and every tournament consists of 3 people uh, every time they will lose right, the worst solution as well as the second worst solution right, uh, that way neither of them will find a copy. So, if you generalize it if our tournament size is n right then the worst n minus solution will not be in the mating pool. So, if we take that every competition will require uh, 5 members to play it right. So, in that case the worst 4 solutions will not uh, find a place in the mating pool right. But for the rest of this discussion we will be sticking to only k is equal to 2 that our tournament size is fixed 2 members will be playing in a particular tournament. So, uh, subsequently after looking at the crossover and mutation operator, uh, we will also solve an example right. So, if things are not clear over here, uh, we hope you will be able to pick it up over there right. So, the variation operator that uh, we will be studying as part of this course is single point crossover right. So, this variation operator is responsible for generating the offspring. Remember the generic flowchart, we had a population from that population we employed the tournament selection to get a mating pool 
right from over mating pool we will be applying the crossover to get the offspring. So, two binary strings are chosen randomly from the population to perform crossover. In single point crossover what will happen is some portion of the parent strings are exchanged to generate two offsprings. So, we need to fix something called as crossover site to employ this crossover. So, crossover site is a random integer chosen between 1 and n d. d is the dimension of the problem, n is the number of bits we have chosen to represent the real variables. Right? So, as we discussed earlier we may have 11 columns. So, in that 11 columns from 1 to 11 we need to randomly decide on a integer that integer is known as crossover site and crossover of two parents is going to occur with a probability. From the mating pool we will select two members, we will generate a random number, uh, if the random number is less than what is called as crossover probability those two solutions will undergo crossover, else they will not undergo crossover. Let us look at an example, so if our bit length is 4, our decision variable is 2, then the string length will be n into d. Right. So, in this case it has to be 8, our string length will be 8 and if we decide that the crossover site is 3, again between 1 and 8 we are supposed to generate a random number. So, if we decide that random number to be 3, in this case if the parents are this, right? so there are 8 strings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, these two parents are randomly selected from the mating pool. So, now we have a mating pool from the mating pool we have randomly selected two parents. So, these are the two parents and we have decided the crossover to be 3. So, that means we will make a cut over here. right? So, if we call this as head of parent 1 and this as tail of parent 1, this as head of parent 2 and the tail of parent 2, then these two tails will be swapped. That will help us to create new solutions. So, those are called as offspring, offspring 1 and offspring 2. So, here if we see head of parent 1, 1 0 0 and the tail 10 0, 1, 1. So, 10 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So, this is nothing but swapping the tails. Similarly, the second offspring is 0, 1, 0, which is nothing but the first part of the parent and the tail of the first parent 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right. So, this is called a single point crossover. As you can see, it is very straightforward. Right. We choose a location at which we want to cut the strings and then swap the tails. So, that will help us to generate new solutions. So, this is single point crossover. right? In mutation what we will do is, we will change the bit 1 to 0 and vice versa. So, for every bit we will generate a random number. If that random number is less than the mutation probability, right? mutation probability is to be again set by the user. So, if the random number is less than mutation probability, we will mutate that particular bit. So, if that particular bit has a value of 0, we will convert it into 1 and if it has a value of 1, we will convert it into 0. So, this shows an example, if the mutation probability is 0 0.3 and if our offspring, right? so we are calling this offspring because this has come from the crossover, after crossover what we get is offspring, right? so mutation is to be performed on the offspring, right? so uh, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, our string length is 8. So, here we need to generate 8 random numbers between 0 and 1. Right? Except for the first one and the sixth one, all the other random numbers are greater than the mutation probability. Right? So, we need to identify the ones which are less than mutation probabilities. So, in this case it happens to be 1 and 6. Right? So, in this bit length except for 1 and 6, we will retain all those things. So, these two zeros are to be retained, this 1 0 1 is to be retained this 0 is also to be retained right? and these two elements, this first and sixth element, if it is 1, it has to be replaced by 0 and if it is 0, it has to be replaced by 1. So, this is a new offspring. Right? So, again it is a very simple uh, uh, operation to understand as well as to implement. So, now we have the initial population which underwent tournament selection, we got uh, mating pool, the mating pool under, uh, underwent crossover we obtained the offspring, the offsprings underwent mutation, we have offspring. So, now we have the initial population, not the parents, but the initial population and we have the offspring. Let us say in any particular generation, we had the initial population right? and then we performed crossover and mutation to get this offspring. right? So, let us call the initial population as mu and the offsprings we generated as lambda. Now, what we need to do is, we need to combine the population and the offspring. 
right. Remember this is not the parents, right, this is not the parents. Parents is what we got at the end of selection which was there in the mating pool, right. So, we obtained the parents, we did crossover, we did mutation, we got offsprings, right. This offspring which we generated in the current generation and the population which was the basis on which these offsprings got generated, those are to be combined, right. So, we need to combine them and we need to select the best members, right. So, if our population size is NP, let us say we generated NP new solutions. So, totally we have 2 NP solutions. So, out of these 2 NP solutions, we need to select the best NP solutions, right. That will be the population for the subsequent G plus 1th generation, right. So, this has to be NP. In the strategy that uh, we will see both for binary coded GA and the uh, real coded GA, uh, here we will have NP offsprings, right. But it is not necessary that we generate always NP offsprings. We may be, we may generate 3 NP offsprings or NP by 2 offsprings depending upon the crossover and mutation strategies that we employ, right. So, but ultimately for uh, steady state GA, we need to still select the best NP solutions, right. So, that way the population for every generation is of the same size. So, this strategy is more widely known as mu plus lambda strategy, right. So, far if you see we were employing greedy selection strategy. Let us say in TLBO we had solution 1, let us say in teacher phase we were able to get a better solution S1 prime, right. Then we compared if S1 prime is better than S1 or S1 is greater than S1 prime. Depending upon whichever one is better that underwent the learner phase, right. And let us say we obtained S1 double prime then it replaces, if this is better it replaces this solution, right. So, for every solution we were deciding then and there whether it has to be inco included in the population or not, right. Over here we generate the entire set of offsprings, then combine with the population, the initial population, right and then we pick up the best NP solutions. This is unique to genetic algorithm. There are various other meta heuristic techniques which employ mu plus lambda, but among the meta heuristic techniques discussed uh, so far in this course, uh, it is only genetic algorithm which employs this mu plus lambda selection strategy. Okay, so now let us look into an example, right? So, so is the same spear function, right? Instead of four variables, we'll take a two variable problem. We'll take we are taking two variable problem because as you would have realized, uh, once we fix the bit length the number of columns in the population is going to increase substantially, right. So, that is why we are just showing it for two variable problems, so that it is much easier to calculate things. But whatever we are discussing can be implemented for any number of decision variable. Let us take the bounds to be 0 and 30. So, so far we were having 0 and 10, we have taken 0 and 30, so that we get a better representation uh, of the solutions. So, the objective function is x1 square plus x2 square the decision variables are x1 and x2 and the bounds are 0 to 30, right. So, first for uh, binary coded GA, we need to fix the population size, the maximum number of iterations, these two are similar to all the 5 techniques which we have discussed. We need to fix the bit length, right. So, in this case we are taking a bit length of 4 that each variable will be represented by a 4 bit binary string. We need to fix the crossover probability to be used in single point crossover and we need to fix mutation probability, right. So, in this case we have fixed crossover probability to be 0.8 and mutation probability to be 0.3. So, crossover probability is usually set uh, to a high value uh, as compared to a uh, mutation value. So, we want more solutions to undergo crossover and only few solutions to undergo mutation, right. So, the first step is to generate a binary population, right. So, for example, here the length would be 8 uh, because the number of column is n into d. We have two decision variables and for each decision variable we decided to use 4 bit string, right. So, these 4 values are going to correspond to x1, these 4 values are going to correspond to x2. Similarly, for the rest of the population member, right. So, here we have taken a population size of 4, so that is why we have 4 rows and we have 8 columns because of 2 variables and each variable represented by 4 bit string. Right. So, now how do we calculate the fitness of this? To calculate the fitness of this first we need to find out what is the decoded value. Decoded value is nothing but the decimal equivalent of this. So, if we find the decimal equivalent of this, this is 0 into 0, 
0 into 2 power 0 plus 0 into 2 power 1 plus 1 into 2 power 2 plus 1 into 2 power 3. So, this is 8 plus 4. So, this works out to be 12. So, the decoded value is 12. So, the decoded value is nothing but the decimal equivalent which all of us should be comfortable with. So, once the decoded values are found out, remember this decoded values are not to be directly plugged into the fitness function. right? So, from this decoded value we need to find out the actual values which correspond to the real variables. right? So, for that we need to use this expression. So, in this case this expression if we plug in all those values, so x minus 0 plus x max is 30, x minus 0 divided by 2 power 4 because our n is 4 minus 1, so into dv. So, here if we simplify this we get this uh, nice expression 2 into dv and this is valid for both the variables. right? It is valid for both the variables because both the variables are in the same bounds 0 to 30 and both variables are represented by 4 bit string. Right? So, if that was not the case then you would get a different expression like this for both the variables. For x1 you will have a different expression, for x2 you will have a different uh, expression. So, now that we have decoded the values over here and found the actual values over here, this is what is to be plugged into this fitness function x1 square plus x2 square and we need to determine the fitness of all the four members. So, we had an initial binary population we converted into decoded population, we found the actual value and then we found the fitness. So, once we have found the fitness, next step is to implement the tournament selection. We implement the tournament selection to determine the mating pool. right? So, now we need to fix the pool size. So, in this case we will fix the pool size to be the same as population size which is 4. right? So, this is what we have so far. right? So, we need to randomly select two solutions. Right. So, let us say we select the second solution and the fourth solution right? P2 and P4 and their corresponding fitness function F2 and F4. So, these two solutions are going to compete and the winner is going to be put into the mating pool. So, this is our mating pool. right? So, between the competition between P2 and P4, the fitness function for P2 is 232, the fitness function for P4 is 544. So, the winner obviously would be P2 because we are looking at a minimization problem. The solution with minimum fitness will go into the mating pool. So, P2 is our first member in the mating pool. right? So, but we want four, four members right? and P2 and P4 have competed once. So, let us have another competition between P1 and P3. right? So, P1 has a fitness function of 900 and P3 has a fitness function of 164. So, the winner obviously would be P3. right? So, this is our second competition. Right. So, similarly if we conduct two more competitions between P1 and P4 and P2 and P3, the winner would be P4 and P3 respectively because P4 has 544 and P1 has 900. So, P1 would lose out. Uh, similarly, P3 has 164, P2 has 232. So, P3 will find a place in the mating pool. So, our initial population size was 4. We wanted 4 members in the mating pool. So, we conducted 4 competitions 1, 2, 3 and 4. Right? So, here if we see each member got participated in the 2 competitions. So, for example, P1 this is the first competition, this is the second competition for P1. For P2 this is the first competition, this is the second competition. For P3 this is the first competition, second competition. P4 this is the first competition and this is the second competition. So, this we have played systematically. right? Each member participates in two tournaments right? and the winner will be placed in the mating pool and you need to make sure that uh, let us say the first tournament was between P1 and P2. So, the next tournament should not be between P1 and P2. It will still satisfy the criteria that each member plays two tournaments, but that has to be randomly selected. right? So, at the end of the mating pool here if we see, so among this fitness function. 164 was the best solution right and 900 was the worst solution right so p3 is the best solution so here if we see we have two copies of p3 right whereas p1 uh, which is the worst solution because it has the highest fitness function value 900 does not find a place in this right so that is what we had studied earlier that the best solution will definitely occur twice the worst solution will definitely not occur Depending upon uh, many other parameters, the rest of the solution can occur either once, twice or they may not even occur. Right. So, now we have completed the tournament selection, let us implement the 
crossover operation right so this is our mating pool p2 p3 p4 p3 right so there are two copies of p3 and one copy of p2 and one copy of p4 right so here if we see a particular solution would be repeated uh, twice so for example this one and this one are identical so this is actually corresponding to this p3 so two copies are there so this is not the population remember this is not the population this is the parent or the mating pool right and the rest of those two solutions are there p2 p4 so we are we have taken a crossover probability of 0.8 so after crossover we require four solutions right so each crossover will give us two solutions so if you have looked at the single point crossover carefully one crossover operation will give us two solutions so here we'll implement only two crossovers but we'll still get four solutions so let's say we randomly selected parent 1 and parent 2 right and we need to first generate a random number right if this random number is less than the crossover probability we need to perform crossover so in this case 0.2 is less than 0.8 so we'll perform crossover if we have to perform crossover we need to select a random crossover site so in this case let the random number be 3 so we will be cutting at uh, the third string after the third string and then swapping it right so 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 right so this is uh, part a over here and part b over here that is what is our first offspring and this lower case a and the lower case b will form the second offspring right 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 so now we have determined the offspring right uh, we do not need to evaluate the fitness function of this yet because the mutation operator is still pending right so now if we go for the second crossover we had to do two crossovers right because we wanted four solutions we have got two offsprings we need two more offspring previously we had taken one and two now we are taking 3 and 4 so this has to be done randomly right so let's say we select now parent 3 and parent 4 again we need to generate a random number 0.6 let's say in this case this is still less than pc so we need to perform the crossover right so since we need to perform the crossover we need to determine the random site right so in this case let the random site be 5 right 1 2 3 4 5 so after the fifth position we cut the solution and then swap the tails right so the first part would be identical right in both the cases right this two would be interchanged right so 101010 zero, one, zero, one, zero. now we have four offspring so previously we generated two offspring now we have generated two offspring so we have four offspring in this example for both the crossover we happen to do a crossover right like the random number which we generated happened to be less than crossover probability so we did a crossover single point crossover if it had happened let us say this number uh, this random number 0 0.6 instead of 0 0.6 if it had happened to be 0 0.9 right then it is not less than the crossover probability so we do not need to do a crossover right in that case offspring 3 will be nothing but parent 3 and offspring 4 will be nothing but parent 4. So if the random number is less than crossover probability we need to do the single point crossover if the random number is greater than or equal to the crossover probability then we need to copy the parent themselves as offspring right. so now that we have completed crossover the next step is bitwise mutation right so every member has to undergo mutation right so uh, for the first member so this is the first member uh, we need to generate eight random numbers because the string length is eight right so let us say these are our random numbers and our mutation probability is 0.3 so in this vector we need to identify all the elements which are less than 0.3 right so in this case it happens that only this is less than uh, 0.3 so except for the second element right this is the original offspring this is the new offspring so except for the second element all the rest of the strings all these strings have to be copied as such and the second string has to be converted into 1 so z if it is 0 since it is 0 we converted it to 1 if it had been 1 we would convert it into 0 that is what is mutation right similarly for the other three strings o2 o3 o4 these are the actual offsprings which we obtained at the end of crossover right so we have this random numbers for each of this right so we need to generate these random numbers for each offspring we need to generate eight random numbers and then wherever it is less than uh, 0.3 our mutation probability which is a user defined value 
wherever it is less than 0 0.3 we need to change those bits. So, here in this case we have these 3. So, this would get changed to a 0, right? this would get changed to a 0 and this would get changed to a 0. So, here if you see this is 1, this is 0, uh, this is 1, so this is getting changed to 0 and the last one is 1, so this will get changed to 0. None of the elements in this are less than 0 0.3. Right, so none of these strings would undergo mutation, so that entire string would get repeated. Right, so now we have this offspring. Right, so uh, now we need to find the decimal equivalent of this. Right, so decimal equivalent of this you we need to find, uh, which is nothing but the decoded value. Once we have the decoded value, we need to plug it into this expression. Right, and then calculate the actual value. So, that should be straightforward. Right? So, the decimal equivalent of this would be 0 into 2 power 0 plus 1 into 2 power 1 plus 1 into 2 power 2 plus 0 into 2 power 3. Right? So, this is nothing but 2 plus 4. So, this will be 6. Right? So, the decoder value of this is 6. Right? In this case, because the lower bound is x minus 0 and x max is 30 and n is equal to 4 right if we plug this into this expression we will get this 2 into decoded value so the decoded value is 6 so the actual value is 12 right? so if you decode this you should get 5 because we have a 10 over here right so now we have the actual values denoted by o suffix a o stands for the offspring a stands for the actual values not the decoded values right so once we have this actual values we can calculate the offspring right so we had initial population we employed tournament selection to get the mating pool over the mating pool we employed single point crossover we got offsprings on the offsprings we employed mutation to get the mutated offsprings or uh, for simplicity we just call that also our offspring so we have now the initial population and this offspring right so this was our initial population which we had started with and this is now our current offspring so we are supposed to combine both of this so this is the combined population and this is the combined fitness function value and then we need to sort this vector sort this vector to determine the best four right because our population size is four right in this case we generated four offspring so this will be eight values one two three four five six seven eight so these are eight values so, but we require only 4 of them, right. So, what we will do is, we will select the best 4, right. So, the best 4 in this case happens to be this 80, 164, 200 and 232. So, only those 4 solutions would be retained, right. 232, 164, 232, 164, 80 and 200, 80 and 200. Remember, when you are finding out the best solution over here, you need to uh, pick the corresponding solution vector, right. So, these 4 are to be taken and these 4 are to be discarded. Right. So, this is the new population. Right. So, for again for this population we will do tournament selection. Once we do tournament selection we will do crossover, after crossover mutation, after mutation we will employ a mu plus lambda strategy where we will combine the offspring as well as the original population to determine the population for the next iteration or generation. This is the working of binary coded genetic algorithm. So, before we conclude, uh, let us quickly look at the pseudo code of it. So, we need to provide the fitness function lower bound, upper bound uh, which comes from the problem itself. We need to decide on the number of population that we are going to employ and a termination criteria. Usually, it is the number of iterations, right. We need to decide how many bits are we going to represent a variable with, right. For simplicity, we have given n over here but each variable can have different width. So, for example, variable 1 can be represented by a 5 bit string and variable 2 can be represented by a 10 bit string. right? And then we have a, a mutation and crossover probability which is to be given and the tournament size k. right? So, the first step is to initialize a random population of binary string. Remember this binary string. This is different from other meta heuristic techniques which we discussed. The size would be n p into n into d right because e for each variable decision variable we have n bits right so that's why it is np into nd then we need to evaluate the fitness so to evaluate the fitness remember from binary string we cannot directly evaluate the fitness from binary string we need to 
determine the decoded values. From the decoded values, we need to determine the actual values. It is then the actual values can be taken and plugged into the uh, fitness function and we can obtain the fitness function value. Right. So, then we have this uh, iteration loop for t is equal to 1 to capital T. Right. Then we need to perform the tournament selection. In tournament selection, we will take two members, have a, co a competition between them and the winner would be placed in the mating pool. Right. So, for our discussion, we took k is equal to 2, but k can be any number. Right. So, once we have that mating pool, we need to do NP by 2 crossovers. Right. So, because each crossover is going to give us two solutions, so we do NP by 2 crossovers. So, in that case, we need to randomly choose two parents, not population member, parents, right? Parents which we obtained at the end of tournament selection, right? Which are there in the mating pool, right? And then we need to generate a random number uh, for this case, whether i equal to 1 will undergo a crossover or not. So, if this condition happens where p c is crossover probability, again user defined it, then we need to randomly select a crossover site and generate two offspring using single point crossover. So, quickly here if you see single point crossover, it is just that if you have these two parents 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 1, uh, we cut over here and then swap it. So, this part uh, would come here and this part would come here. Similarly, this part and this part would come over here. So, that is how we generate two offsprings over here. Similarly, we need to uh, do for all the pairs, right? And if this condition fails, right, we need to copy the selected parents as offspring, right? So, at the end of this offspring, we will definitely have NP solutions. Though we are doing NP by 2 crossover, each crossover gives us two solutions. So, at the end of it, we will have NP solutions. And then we need to uh, perform mutations. So, the next step is to generate nd random numbers, nd because if we have two variables and we have taken as n as 4, then our string length is actually 8, right. So, we need to generate nd random numbers which are between 0 and 1, right. And then we need to check if a particular random number is less than mutation probability, then we need to perform the mutation. So, here if it is less than the mutation probability only then we need to perform bitwise mutation, right. Once we have performed bitwise mutation, then we have all the offspring. Again, offsprings cannot be directly used to determine the fitness function value. We need to convert them into their decimal equivalents or what we call decoded value. From that, we need to find out their actual values using that expression x min plus x max minus x min divided by 2 power n minus 1 into decoded value and then we will get the actual value which can be used to determine the fitness of the offspring. Right? Once we are done with that, then we need to combine the population, not the parent. It is not parent, it is population. Right? A parent will have multiple copies of population member. Parent is used only for uh, crossover. Once crossover is done and we have the offspring, we need to combine the offspring with the population, right? with the population that this generation had in its uh, beginning. Right? So, then we combine both of them and do a mu plus lambda strategy to select NP members. Right? So, once we have the NP members, uh, we need to keep doing these generations till uh, capital T times. Right? So, because that is our uh, termination criteria. So, that is binary coded genetic algorithm. Right? So, over here if we see, uh, this is the generation phase, the in crossover and in the mutation, we are generating new solutions. So, that is the generation phase and from mu plus lambda, we are doing a survival of the fitness. So, out of two NP solutions, we are only selecting NP solutions, right. So, the best get survived, right. So, if we see about the functional evaluations, right. So, initially NP times we need to do the functional evaluation and over here also we need to do NP times the functional evaluation, right. So, over here remember we had this condition. So, just like if you uh, go back and look at the fourth string for which we did mutation, uh, all the numbers which we generated randomly were greater than uh, the mutation probability. So, we did not have to mutate any string. So, if we are not mutating, then that means that it is the same uh, population member, right. So, if it is the same population member, uh, we need not evaluate the fitness again because we already would have its fitness, right. So, in the worst case, assuming that every time we do mutation, we get a new solution, 
uh, NP functional evaluation will be required, right. So, that is why the max is written over here that the maximum number of functional evaluation there is NP, it can be less than that also. So, if the crossover did not happen that is R was not less than equal to PC, then you would have not done a crossover, right. You would have merely copied the parents. So, now if you have merely copied the parents, there is no need to evaluate their fitness because that is something which we already have, right. So, one can optimally utilize the fitness function evaluation, but in the worst case it will have NP evaluations, right. Assuming that everything uh, NP members which we are generating are actually the new ones and not the parents are not being copied in the crossover and mutation actually results in uh, mutating at least one of the bits. Right. So, if this is NP times then that has to be performed T times over here, right. So, the total number of fitness function value will be NP plus NPT. Before we conclude binary GA, let us quickly look at the drawbacks of binary GA. So, binary GA actually makes the search space discrete. So, if your search space is between let us say the lower and upper bounds are 0 and 5 for x1 and x2, right it makes this the search space which is continuous it actually makes it discrete because it locates only at certain points because it works with the binary strings right. It cannot achieve any arbitrary precision right. So, the precision is governed by this one uh, this expression which we have seen previously right. So, if we want to increase the precision we will have to increase the size of the bit length right and if we increase the bit length if we increase uh, the bit length then the dimension of the problem uh, increases right dimension in the sense uh, your optimization problem might have only two variables but because you are choosing to represent it by a larger string the size of the population the number of columns in the population would uh, go up right so that increases the computational load right so that is a problem with binary ga and this is a classical example what is called as hamming cliffs so let us say we are at a solution 15 right uh, or let us say we are at this solution 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let us say that corresponds to this 15, the uh, decoded value of this is actually 15, you can calculate that, right. So, from 15 if I want to move to 16, right. So, 15 and 16 if you think about in uh, real space they are close, right. Whereas, for this solution to become this solution, right, this is the solution for which the decoded value is 16. For this solution to turn out to be this solution, changes need to happen uh, on 4 strings, right. Only then this solution uh, which is at 15 can actually come to this solution representing 16. So, that is very difficult to happen. So, if this has to happen in mutation, then we are expecting all the 5 random numbers uh, chosen for all these 5 elements uh, to be actually less than the mutation probability only then this will get converted into this or you are re relying on a crossover operator wherein you get two such solutions for which if you do a crossover you will end up with this solution right. So, uh, points which are even closer by it might be difficult for binary GA for to move from uh, point A to point B despite the fact that they are actually closer in the real space, but they are not closer in the binary space or at least because of the operators that uh, we employ, right. So, that is a drawback of uh, binary coded GA. So, in the next session we will look into uh, real coded GA, right. Thank you. <laughs>